Hello again, YouTube. Uh, we are going to catch you up on what happened. Basically, I hit 1,000 on my Nebulok jog. There'll be a video coming for that soon. But that was my league goal, so we decided to make a new character. I had not fucked around with poison at all. So we decided we were going to screw with that some. So I've decided to make a Blade Vortex Poison Pathfinder because everyone else is doing attacks and assassin, and I didn't want to. So we've done a few interesting things. For starters, we've used two cold iron point daggers. Now, they're four or five chaos each, so picking up good corruptions on them was about 50 chaos each. So on one of them, I got chance to gain frenzy charge on kill, and on the other one, I got chance to gain power charge on critical strike. So now I generate frenzy and power charges without any curse or worry, just from the weapons, because those are incredibly cheap. We have gone nature's reprisal, master toxicist. I think I got that right. And then Nature's Boon and Master Alchemist. Now, Master Alchemist is just for my immunity to ailments because I'm already using three unique flasks and it, I'd really like to fit in an extra one. I don't have a Sin's Rebirth on right now and I'd like to. So I just, there was too many unique flasks and we needed, uh, we needed to be immune to ailments somehow. So we did that. I'm wearing a Solstice Vigil, which I corrupted with Whispers of Doom is a little bit expensive. Two golden oils. Definitely not mandatory for this build. Um, much cheaper to swap out a Despair in Presence and then use one curse and then swap out your Witchfire Brew for a Sin's Rebirth. And you would get almost, almost the same amount of damage, just a little less tank because we don't have the Temporal Chains. So I've got Temporal Chains, Blasphemy, Increase Area of Effect because it's free. I'm still figuring out what to do with these links, although I do have Smoke Mine. And we have Poison, Deadly Ailments, Unbound Ailments, Vile Toxin, and Unleash linked to Blade Vortex. I have gone with a Doriani Glorious Vanity Timeless Jewel. Now this changes my Keystone into Corrupted Soul. So 50% of non-chaos damage taken bypasses energy shield, gain 20% of maximum life as extra energy shield. And that is where a very large chunk of our energy shield is currently coming from. That is a 1000 ES jewel right now. That mixed with, since we were going to have some life and some energy shield, we have uh, a little bit of spell damage leached as energy shield. And because of the Xeris Promise, a little bit of Chaos Damage, which I do a decent amount of with the Flask Up, Leech as Life. So we've got Life Leech and Energy Shield Leech. Now, I went with two pieces of the Spider Set. I could get the Mitts here for... I think I paid 45 Chaos for them with a spell has have crit chance implicit because we're a little light on the crit and I needed a way to help that without using a crit gem so I went with that and then I was looking at it and I was like that's cool 10 to 14 chaos damage for each spider's web on the enemy and I was like well I am sort of hybrid so what about the boots here which two big parts of aspect of the spider can inflict spider's web on enemies an additional time so that's another stack of 5% more damage taken or, or increased damage taken for the enemy, giving me 20% increased damage taken rather than 15. So that's cool. But also gain 20 energy shield for each enemy hit, which is affected by Spider's Web, which is all of them because Spider's Web is huge. So now I have some... Energy Shield Leech, some Life Leech, a little bit of Life Regen, and a little bit of Energy Shield on hit. So defensively, that's coming together quite well. Quite well. Um, I've gone with one Circle of Nostalgia. Now this is going to get replaced because I don't need the buff effect. I only need the Mana Reservation. So I am going to get around to replacing this with something that has 
either chaos resist or chaos damage as the second roll because I really only need the mana reservation. Um, we have gone for a carcass jack for much more area, a stygian to get a lot of resists because we needed resists somewhere, and uh, crafted this helmet ourselves. We just bought the base for like 80 chaos um, for blade vortex duration. Technically, I probably didn't need the duration and the crit multi per is probably better but I really like to be able to just continue running and not recasting. Um, it does appear like the carcass jack is affecting this node, but I can't be 100% sure. Um, when you kill a poisoned enemy during any flask effect, nearby enemies are poisoned. So this is our poison prolif that assassins have been getting from Bino's kitchen knife. Ours is built into the Ascendancy, and I don't have to wear Bino's Kitchen Knife, but I just don't know if the area that I'm scaling is making it prolif further or not. Either way, it still feels really good. I just can't quite figure that out. So yeah, we've done that. We've just got a bunch of res and a little bit of life on an energy shield base ring because we're scaling both now. And... Uh, We've still kept our Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline and a Curse Flask, and then just three uniques. Um, so, to demonstrate how she works, is only level 76 right now. It has a decent amount more damage to get, but mostly a lot of survivability to get, as well as to figure out what's left with my last um, points, my last uh, jewel gem sockets, but. It's very easy now to maintain 10 Blade Vortex stacks. They just, they just, they stay up a very long time. It means you do not have to stop to cast very often, which means we just get to run through. Give you to the earth. And it's been like this since, um, I want to say Cruel Ascendancy. My mana is gone. It's pretty much been this good since Cruel Ascendancy. Um, something else that's worth noting is the poison prolif appears to prolif into the darkness and kill enemies. While they seem immune to, um, I'm going to see if I can find a pack that's close enough to poison the edge of, so you can see it. Okay, so all those died up to here, but darkness starts here. Where the flare I threw, the darkness started here. But poison prolif and killed everything that was close enough. So... Poison Prolif seems to go into the darkness, um, but you have to poison something that's in the light and then let it Prolif into the darkness, which is interesting and has certainly given me a lot more experience while doing some early delves. But it has been quite a delight and very smooth to play, and I'm very excited to get it path, uh, leveled a little bit harder. Parthing to start with. We've gone pretty heavy under the flask effect. We will be getting this node soon. So we've gone for the flask nodes here, the flask nodes here, the flask nodes there, the flask nodes there. A little bit of duration, because like I said, I don't like casting. Um, I do have this whole wheel pick out eventually. Um, we got a bit of crit there. Gone up, we've taken that one fatal toxin wheel. We've gone up, this, this, this pathing is a little bit weird. But no matter what way you path here is a little bit weird, and this way let me get a tiny bit of energy shield leech, which made me feel a lot safer. I do have a Watcher's Eye that costs me 1x. That gives me damaging ailments you inflict deal x faster, deal damage x faster while affected by malevolence. That is the important role. That one is definitely the important role and the budget option. The slightly better one is chaos damage over time multiplier while affected by malevolence but that becomes significantly more expensive and for like a third the price of that one mod i was able to also become immune to bleeding so i did that because it was the cheaper more budget option um right so we've come down things of the viper entropy through the assassin crit a little bit of life there we've gotten dire torment which gives me damage over time multiplier from critical strikes, as well as a bit of critical strike chance. Unfortunately, we lost our 30% critical strike chance node there because the timeless jewel reaches it. 
but it did give me energy shield Car speed, movement speed, mana regeneration, didn't really need any of them. None of these other ones are exceptionally good for what I'm doing. Um, they just don't lead in well enough. This one is maybe okay for later, like mid 90s. Cause we've got a little bit of ES, ES, a little bit of resistance and chaos damage and chaos damage leech, which my life leech is still a little bit on the dodge side. So I'm not, not in love with the life leech, but the energy shield leech is already good because of the energy shield gained on hit. So we might take this in the mid 90s if we get there. But I mean, we've also got the entire atrophy wheel, which will be very good for damage. And then we've got floating life node there. We've got a jewel socket here I want. We've got the whole rest of the scion life wheel, which will scale both my life and my energy shield. And we've got heart of oak. So there's quite a lot there. Um, I've also considered Toxic Strikes, but I just don't think it quite wins because I'm a spell build and not an attack build. If I also got that 30% Chaos Damage with attacks, Toxic Strikes would be worth it. Same problem here is uh, the, all the lead-in is attack speed stuff. And it just, yeah, chance to poison with attacks, attack speed, attack speed, damage over time. Poisons, attack speed, chance to hit with, chance to poison with attacks. Poison you inflict deal damage 5% faster, which I really like, but because everything leading into it is like mixed with attack speed, it becomes just sort of like a weaker wheel or spells. So I just haven't gone it. Um, if you go to make a character like this and you don't go with the Solstice Vigil and anointing Whispers of Doom, because that's very expensive, do be aware that the... Despair in Presence should go there, and then you should instead anoint Dirty Techniques. It is a very, very good damage um, node to pick up with a 10 multi, 20% poison duration, and 5% faster dealt damage as a very, very good node, and that is what I would anoint had I gone the other cheaper route. But yeah, this, this looks pretty good. I did already kill a Shaper with it. At, I think it was level 72. I can't remember. It went pretty good. The ramp up time was a little bit... Eh, but the damage once I'd ramped up was really, really good. So we're going to see if we can work on pumping that damage up just a little bit higher so it doesn't feel like it takes so long to ramp up. But yeah. That is it for the update on this character. I'm pretty excited to play it for the next few days, see if I can push it into some endgame, see if I can do some Uber Eldar and such. And yeah. All right, lovely. I am Baylor Mage and I will see everybody later.